Single player video games are some of the best experiences you could ever have. They're immersive, they're personal, and depending on the story, they can really change the way you look at games as a whole. Welcome to Chaos Gaming, everybody. Today, I want to do another ridiculously hard list because I don't know why, because I like torturing myself, and I'm going to give you guys the 25 best single player games of all time. Now, drop a like if you would. Stick around for the whole video. Let me know in the comment section if you make it all the way to number one. You can let me know if you agree or disagree as well. And here we go. At number 25, Final Fantasy VII. This is often called the best RPG of all time. Now, it launched in 97 for the original PlayStation, and it pretty much defined what turn-based RPGs were supposed to be like. The story followed a group of mercenaries trying to stop an eco-terrorist group and getting distracted along the way as you, well, you often do in RPGs. Now, the game introduced us to the gaming icon Cloud Strife, while also giving us an amazing soundtrack and influential gameplay. The remake? It was a little hit or miss on certain elements, but honestly, the original game holds up super well. Next up is Resident Evil 4. Now, the Resident Evil series is hit or miss. We know that. Most will agree, though, that RE4 was the best that it's ever had. Released in 2005, RE4 brought the series away from the fixed cameras and tank controls and instead gave you full control of your character. It let you get up close and personal with the horrors around you. Now, RE4's story was also much more grounded, which allowed newcomers to get invested without needing to know the lore. And then, of course, there's the gameplay practically invented third-person shooters as we know them today. At number 23, Persona 5 Royal. The Persona series, it's been around for a while, but it never really broke into the mainstream. However, in 2016, that all changed with Persona 5. And a few years later, the complete edition called Persona 5 Royal launched. Now, despite being released less than a year ago, it's one of the best reviewed games ever, according to Metacritic. And with how much people love it, I can't leave it out. I mean, many consider it to be the best RPG of all time, and if you've never tried it, well, there's no better time than now. At number 22, Metroid Prime. People were worried when Nintendo announced they were turning Metroid into a first-person shooter, but the end result was one of the best in the genre's history. Metroid Prime launched for the GameCube 18 years ago. Do you feel old yet? To critical acclaim, thanks to its visuals, the gameplay, the exploratory world. It was, it was awesome. It was brought to life. It was the spirit of the 2D games in a third dimension. Now, the Metroid series never really managed to hit the level of greatness again, but Prime is still one of the best Nintendo exclusives of all time. At number 21, GTA Vice City. Now, after GTA 3, people were eager for more, and Rockstar brought their A game. Vice City brought the open world action to the 80s in a fictional version of Miami. The atmosphere was awesome, the story was great, and Vice City managed to improve upon GTA 3 in every single way. Many people consider it to be the best one in the series. Now there's a reason why people keep asking for GTA 6 to go back to Vice City. At number 20, Batman Arkham City. Now Arkham Asylum laid the foundation. Arkham City hit the home run. It expanded, I mean, expanded the scale of everything. An open world, new villains, an awesome story, full of nostalgic voice actors, and the gameplay was perfected from the first title. Now, some prefer the smaller scale of si Asylum. I get that. But Arkham City is considered by many to be the best superhero game ever made, and I, I can't really disagree with that. The game was fantastic. Next up is Portal, widely regarded as the best puzzle game ever made. It was released 13 years ago, once again, Do You Feel Old, by Valve. It was a short but sweet adventure game where you played as a girl going through the series of experiments being conducted by this mysterious and very funny uh, AI. Now, Portal is one of the best and most unique gaming experiences ever made, despite only being about three hours long. The atmosphere, the gameplay, the characters, the writing, it was perfect. Speaking of perfect, The Last of Us. Released in 2013, it took the gaming world by storm. It was an extremely well-written story and familiar yet addicting gameplay. You played as a man trying to escort a young girl to safety in a post-zombie apocalypse, which is hard to make unique, right? But they did it. To this day, people still point to The Last of Us as a shining example of how to write believable and engaging character dialogue. Next up, Doom, 1993. The grandfather of first-person shooters. The original Doom not only changed 3D gaming, but it pretty much invented the modern FPS formula that we know today. Yes, we strayed away from it during the mid-2000s, but we're heading right back to it because it works. A super fast-paced, wide cast of enemies, open levels, treasure hunting, tons of ways to play, different strategies, you name it. 
Despite being almost 30 years old, Doom still holds up extremely well and its legacy will live on forever. Red Dead Redemption! I think it's safe to say this is the best Wild West game ever made, right? Released 10 years ago, it was originally seen just as a cowboy GTA, but once people played it, they figured it out. The writing and the world building of Red Dead are some of the best Rockstar has ever done, and despite the world being much less active than GTA, it was much more immersive. You could lose yourself for hours just riding around the map and watching the sunset. Silent Hill 2, hands down the best horror game ever made. Don't argue with me, you're, you're gonna lose. Some of the best atmosphere and writing I've ever seen in a video game. You played as a man searching for his deceased wife in this creepy town full of monsters, and you try to piece together this disturbing and extremely human story about guilt, loss, suffering. It's super deep, right? All while being accompanied by an incredible atmosphere and horrifying monster design. It only got held back by its gameplay, which was rough, it was, but the story and the atmosphere are top notch. At number 14, GTA 5. One of the best games Rockstar has ever developed. It launched seven years ago, and it went on to be one of the best-selling games of all time. The story covers your three protagonists, all drawn into a life of crime for different reasons. And the game not only, I mean, satirizes pretty much every aspect of American life, but it also dives really deep into the psychology of its characters. Trevor, Michael, and Franklin, of course, as they're all in this horrible situation for different reasons. It is a great game and an incredible open-world sandbox. At number 13, Bioshock. One of those games that nobody expected to be as good as it was. 13 years old. It was a single player FPS with some RPG and horror elements thrown in for a very, very, very well written story to boot. You played as a man who crash lands and finds an underwater city called Rapture. Now you're exploring it and he uncovers its horrific past as the game covers themes of utopia and the flaws of human nature. There's even there's a couple sequels, but I think most people are going to agree that the original was the best. At number 12, Uncharted 2. Now, the Uncharted series was a lot bigger than Sony probably expected, and that just about anybody will tell you it peaked with 2. Released in 2009, it built upon the first game's foundation in pretty much every way. It amped up the action, the graphics, the writing, and it truly felt like you were living in a big-budget action movie. I mean, Naughty Dog really knows how to make cinematic action games, and Uncharted 2 may very well be their best work. The Last of Us may be better writing, but Uncharted 2 had much better gameplay. A Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. If you know me, you know this is my personal favorite Zelda game. This is my personal favorite game of all time. Released for the, the Super NES in 91. It was an expansion of the original game's gameplay. It was a top-down action adventure game with a very simplistic story but excellent execution. You searched the world and ventured through dungeons in order to eventually defeat the evil Ganon. Despite the story being simplistic, A Link to the Past is one of the best pure adventure games ever made. It's my favorite. Now we're down to the top 10. Super Mario Galaxy. Now whenever you ask people what the best Mario game of all time is, it won't be long before they bring this one up. 13 years ago for the Wii, it came out. It featured unique gameplay. It made use of the Wii's motion controls in a way that felt Good, it didn't feel excessive like many Wii exclusives did, and Galaxy's level design and music and gameplay are some of the best Nintendo has ever offered. It's not hard to see why so many people think it's one of the best Mario games of all time. At number 9, Fallout New Vegas. Now it's a little ironic that the best Fallout game of all time was not made by Bethesda, but to this day, people adore New Vegas. Released 10 years ago, it had you create a character, and then you got to explore the Mojave Desert in this post-apocalyptic world as you seek revenge for someone trying to kill you. Now, New Vegas is an incredibly well-written game and one of the most immersive RPGs ever made. People still replay this game over a decade later, and it was criticized upon release for its similarities to Fallout 3, but it's only gotten better with age, and I think, I, I think, it's, I think it's a top 10 game. Next up is Dark Souls. Speaking of games that were underappreciated when they came out. Dark Souls launched in 2011. It was overlooked by a lot of people at first due to its very unique combat and its kind of obtuse storytelling. I said obtuse, yeah. However, as time went on and word of mouth spread, this became one of the most adored games of the decade, as well as one of the most influential. The combat actually ended up inspiring many action RPGs that followed it, and I mean, it was just, it was great. It was awesome. At number seven, Half-Life 2. So following the incredible success of the first Half-Life, Valve had a lot on their plates, but they somehow managed to pull it off. 
Half-Life 2 is one of the best sequels in gaming history for many reasons. I mean, it took the greatness of the original and carved out its own identity, and it pushed the technical aspects of the first-person shooter. The AI, fantastic. The level design, great. The physics, revolutionary. And while the story may not have been on the same level as the first, it was still good. At number six, Skyrim. One of the best-selling games of all time, and for good reason. It launched nine years ago, and it continues to pop up in new ways every few years, but as much as people meme it, you can't blame Bethesda. I mean, the game was good. It was a fantasy RPG that had you build up your character, do battle, destroy dragons. I mean, it was just awesome. A common activity in the game was just choosing a direction on your compass and walking until you found something new, because chances are it was going to be fun. And now we've reached the top five. The Witcher 3. Probably the best RPG to come out in the last generation. I mean, it told the story of Geralt, a monster hunter searching for his adopted daughter after she's kidnapped by this evil force trying to harvest her power. The writing and storytelling of this game are some of the best ever. I mean, the art, it's, it's just great. The side quests are all super well written, just as the main quests are. I know people who spent dozens of hours in The Witcher 3 and never even finished the main story because they got that invested in the side quests. At number four... Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Now, despite getting mixed reviews upon release, it's now remembered as one of the best games ever made and a prime example of video games as an art form. The gameplay, it was good. The stealth action was awesome. The series is known for that, but the story tackled extremely tough topics like censorship, conspiracies, political trust, freedom of thought, and a lot more. This was an incredibly deep and well-written game when it first came out. I mean, people were blown away at just how much Hideo Kojima was able to cram into a single PlayStation 2 disc. At number three, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, one of the darkest Nintendo games ever out, honestly, in 64. It was put out 20 years ago, is that right? 20 years ago, woo! The gameplay was pretty faithful copy-paste of the previous game, but the story is what made it stand out. Majora's Mask was much less epic than previous Zelda games and much more grounded. It allowed you to focus on the world and the characters instead of the spectacle and the events. It also tackled some pretty heavy topics for a Zelda game and it featured some of the best music of its time. Now, people still debate over whether this game was better than its predecessor, but I'll, well, we'll fix that here in a second. Half-Life gets number two. Released for the PC in 98, it is one of the single most influential first-person shooters of all time. Valve stated in interviews that they wanted their game to feel like a truly immersive world rather than just a shooting gallery, and what they ended up creating was the basis for all first-person storytelling for decades to come. half life storytelling, its world, its visuals, and gameplay were the best, and it proved to gamers everywhere that FPS games were capable of also telling great stories. And at number one today, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Now, I don't think there's a single game that has influenced single player more than this. Released in 98 for the 64, it was the first fully 3D game in the series, and it did an amazing job at translating the beloved formula into the modern age. The story was simple, but it was extremely well represented, and the gameplay was super addicting. Ocarina of Time changed gaming forever, and there's a reason why it's still the single best reviewed game of all time. And there you have it, 25 best single player games of all time. That was not an easy list. Let me know if you think I got it right, and I'll see you soon.